Welcome to Justice Now. And you've reached the series on tips for black workers. This will be part 15. And it will be entitled The Courage to Speak Up. First, I want to say thank you to D1, to all the subscribers, and all those who have commented. I've also want to say thank you to Dr. Francis Cress Walsling, Grand Sester, all the civil rights persons in the past who have fought against this. Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. who has provided such immense resources to Gus T. Renegade who has done the COWS Context of White Supremacy program for over 10 years to all the callers and listeners of the program to my friends and family for all your support. I deeply thank you because you all have given me the courage and the inspiration to speak up about this. And I would like to share this to all others who will be viewing this content, that the courage to speak up is important. Too many times we have been silenced and forced to carry burdens that are not of our doing, forced to carry a cast, literally an untouchables cast that is not of our doing, forced to live in impoverished situations that are not of our doing. The terrorism that permeates throughout all areas, all nine areas of our lives, such as religion, sex, labor, law, and others, is very daunting. We were born into this. We did not create this chaos. But it is our duty to do what we can to dismantle this racist system. Right now I'm focusing on work, the area of labor. I'll eventually branch out to other aspects such as how it impacts family, how it impacts housing, and others, how it impacts law. I also would like to say thank you to the Breaking Brown family with uh, Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore. You have all shed insight onto the day-to-day -day life of black people and the impact of racism on black workers. Um, the terrorism is real. If you notice, a lot of times these days, Racism is being omitted from the list of social perils. Oftentimes, you'll hear about feminism. Oftentimes, you'll hear about um, gay rights and homosexual issues. But oftentimes, at least in, in these times, I've been noticing and maybe you have been noticing the same too, that uh, racism is not even mentioned. 
and um, we need to spread the word that racism still exists. Not only that it exists, that it's even worse than what it was before. There is no post-racial society at this time. In a lot of ways, many black workers are being eliminated from their jobs. And as a result, a lot of black workers are losing their housing, being denied medical care, being denied the ability to sustain themselves and their family. The terrorism has had a huge impact on myself and my family, on the community. But I'll, I'll talk in relation to myself at this time. Um, it has, uh, it has um, eroded self-confidence. It has disillusioned me into what humanity should be. Right now, it is not, things are not the way, the way they're supposed to be. And um, there's a lot of deceit that are done by terrorists. suspected racists. There's a lot of deceit that's been done. And as a result, I have had my time stolen. I've had my money stolen through not being paid what I should be paid. I've had my dignity eroded and my life has been disrupted many times, many times due to racism. And, um, and it hurts. It not only hurts, but it causes black people their death be it a quick death or a slow death, it causes death. And I myself had turned to self-medicating through food, through cigarettes, but the problem still exists. So self-medication is definitely not the answer. Other people choose to self-medicate in other means. Please realize that is not the answer. It does not help dismantle the system that continues to do this. So some of the ways that I deal with it now is by knowing my rights and I urge you to thoroughly research on knowing your rights. That's why policy and procedures are very important. It's been often discussed about on the COWS program. Knowing your policies and procedures are very important. Um, knowing your legal rights are very important asking questions to gather information and quadruple checking the answers that you receive. Because oftentimes, um, the answers you receive would be met with deception. So that's what I do is I quadruple check my answers. Uh, connecting 
connecting with people, reaching out and connecting with like-minded people also helped me. Uh, meditation helped. Self-care. Doing things for self-care helped. That will be beneficial to creating more of a healthier body helped. Um, and, but most of all, putting a voice to what is going on. Because so many times, black people are shamed into silence for things of not their, of not of their doing. And it's important to speak up, followed by action. This is stuff that you cannot pray away. This is not stuff that you can smoke away. This is not stuff that you can eat away. This is, it, it needs to be actions that will help get to a constructive result. And um, I know that in my past workplaces, you're often chastised for uh, bringing up racial harassment, but I encourage you to review your policies and procedures around racial harassment as well. And when needed, you cite that racial harassment policy. So if you're in social work and you're working with clients or their parents or other staff, and you have been met with racial terrorism, you cite the racial harassment policy. I fear that that policy will be eroded because black workers are too scared to use that policy. Put it into your incident reports. Put it in your concern to emails that you forward to your managers and to HR. If you're met with a customer, so those who work in customer service or those who work in the health industry, if you're met with racism, maintain your composure. But when you're writing your report, you make sure you insert the racial harassment policy. And if you need to, you state that you feel unsafe and that you defer to a higher authority within the company. Don't try to deal with it yourself. At this point, you want more people on board with you. By doing it yourself, it can easily be turned around as if you instigated the situation. And as bizarre as it is, it will be turned around that you instigated the situation. So defer to higher authority by citing that you do not feel safe in the situation. And when you're writing your report about the situation, you make sure to cite the racial harassment policy. That is another way of speaking up. These days, when you mention racism, certain people like to take it as if you have a quote unquote chip on your shoulder. Certain people would like to turn around and make it seem as if you have insulted them? No. This racial harassment policy is designed for your protection and you use it. Currently, at this time, there's so much fear in speaking up that you're scared to lose your job. That's why you need to prepare. And I'm going to do another video on this, designing a crisis management plan so that you prepare for what comes as much as you can to protect yourself and your family. Thank you, and stay tuned for more videos.